Who's the budget? Everybody's favorite thing. <laughs> Actually, it's a nice, clean budget. I, I, I'm glad you said that. I think so. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is my fourth time in front of you, I believe, with budgets. And um, I've really refined the budget, I think, and with Mr. Welch's help, certainly. We've brought it down to where we, we feel it's the, the best operating budget that we can get. Um, in discussing it, we found areas, and with these, the purchase of the tools, uh, Mr. Welch has made a subtraction from my request because we're purchasing tools in this year's money. So that going forward uh, reduced our request to what you see in, in front of you right now. As Christy mentioned, this is a 4.72% increase all related to collective bargaining and wages. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's a 5.77% budget on the table, but you'll see that that is uh, essentially a 1% increase from my request. So I'd like to do it however you want to do it, Mr. Chairman. Well, okay. you want to go line by line, or do you want to? Well, line by line. Well, section by section. Oh, section by section. section, by so. section. Now, I have a quick question on administration, the first account. Okay. Uh, it says this account funds the base salaries for the three members of the administrative staff. Uh, what was the percentage increase? Do you recall? For that particular part? Yeah. Uh, 4.38 in total, but that also doesn't. That also takes it. Thank you. About. Okay, yeah. three point eight eight. Okay. And uh, and there's nothing. No problem for overtime or holiday. I don't know if anybody else has questions there. Anyone? anyone any other questions on? I just have one. Questions on what? Are we just going? Go administration. So, but I'm going to just go around. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. If you okay. have a question. Just on staff development, there's a 25 percent increase. There is. Uh, the staff develop development portion was to include. Um, it's a very small number, 25 yeah, percent, but yeah. I think it's less than 150 dollars. Yeah. Um, there are numerous courses that have gone up in price, as well as uh, part of our memberships and things like that. So there's a cost increase that's been passed on there. Okay. I have a question actually, but I guess it's for the whole budget. Is this, as far as staffing, what are we, is this staffed at what? Uh, current level, which still brings us down to eight. So moving forward with the idea of staying at nine all year would have certainly brought us in um, significantly higher okay. than where we stand. Um, as it stands right now, the time that I sat in front of you in May and then, or maybe it was early June, and then we moved to have the potential to overspend the budget, but to staff to nine, we did that all summer. Mm -hmm. And as I've already told you too, I also staffed to 10 on several occasions due to the heat. Uh, we're still staffing at nine, and uh, based on what we're gonna see from Christy Pulliam this mm -hmm. week with the numbers, I anticipate that that may change, but we're still remaining there right now and watching vigilantly. Okay, so this budget is for Does staffing not have, at nine? It, it's for staffing at nine with a reduction to eight. Okay. So All it right. does not include nine throughout the year. That right. percentage, the last time we did that, brought us up yeah. somewhere over 10 okay. for a budget. Thank you. Real quick, because we jumped to staff development, but tuition reimbursement remains the who, same. Who and what are you tuitioning for? I mean, what? So the, the, it's part of the town policy where yes. a member of the department can go take a class and request reimbursement if it's a class that's um, in line with the ideas of the fire department. Uh, I've taken part in that. I know that we've had two or three firefighters that have gone through that this year. So they okay. have taken a class and taken the tuition reimbursement. So it's being used? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, no question. So so just getting back to the staffing real quick on while we're talking on manpower. This is for normally nine, but can reduce to eight. Will reduce to eight. Will reduce right. To eight. So what we did, and and I say that, but you know we've seen that we were able to maintain what we've been able to maintain. I also have to impress upon you takes into account that nobody and nobody was injured. I had no mm -hmm. members out as a long term injury. Yeah. So right now this has been covering vacations, covering for sick leave, but not anybody who's out for a duration. So what we're looking at right now is the possibility of still staffing over the summer with the same with nine, mm -hmm. but it it remains where it is. I haven't changed the line items for overtime. Okay. Okay. And you, you talked earlier about safer grants. I did. 
And I actually spoke with um, Chief Parr, who was accompanying us today yeah. from FEMA. He's our Region 1 rep. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned that that's going to be opening in November. Um, to, to apply for a SAFER grant, that would take the indulgence of not only the town manager, but the Board of Selectmen, too, to give a letter of endorsement saying that, yes, we want to move forward with this. It doesn't necessarily bind that decision and say that you have to move forward. But moving forward needs yeah. your endorsement because too many communities have said, yeah, I, I would love to do that. And then when, the, when it comes back, they say, well, what did you do that for? There's a cost that goes along with that. Mm -hmm. Just like the AFG grant, we have a 5% cost match. With the SAFER grant, it's a three-year commitment when it comes to it. In the first year, the feds pay 75%. We would own 25% of salary and benefits. On the second year, it's 75%, 25%. In the third year, it goes to 35% and 65%. So the local community is not responsible for 65% of the costs. Mm -hmm. But for the first two years, essentially, you're getting one fire. Uh, mm -hmm. You're getting four firefighters for the cost of one. Yeah. So that's where that play comes in. And the, and the whole reason. And my biggest concern for those is, is with going to 10 will allow you to put an ambulance at the beach Certainly. Yes. Well, all the time. Yes. And, I, you know, I've heard from more and more from time and time from people that's what they want. Mm -hmm. I, I they totally concur. I hear the beach. And, and I, that's what I was getting at. Was Absolutely. Saying. Right. You know, my, you know, so uh, I would say even if we don't get the safer grant, we may want to look at a warrant article for this year. So, and that's fine. Um, uh, we're, we're also working with town manager to maintain the, a budget that is within reason. And the last thing I want to do is, is come in and be laughed out of the room by the town manager. So, you know, <laughs> is that right, Mr. Wells? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, you know, if I come in requesting the moon, I, I expect not to get it. But uh, as I told you when I was looking to staff to nine throughout the summer, you know, I've come in under budget now for four years, and that was strategic. I did that to prove to you that I was maintaining what I could. I'd come in and ask for money, but I maintained the level that I thought prudent so that moving forward, you would see that. And if we did ask for a bigger piece of the pie, well, you know what? I'm managing it correctly. Mm -hmm. So in moving forward, if we're looking to do that, that's fine as a community. I support the idea. I've already told you about the growth, and we've yep. talked about that ad nauseum now. Yep. Yep. But the fact is that as, as we continue to grow, we're going to continue to see more volume. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally agree. Totally agree. I'm fine with the rest of the page on, on that one. Rentals, uniforms, supplies, and expenses. Anybody else have any questions on Yeah, I just have a question on, on fire su su suppression. Okay. Uh, so we're on two, you? right? Yes. I'm sorry? Page 46, or are you looking at the... I'm looking at the, the, the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet, okay. So um, you're on two. All right. Is that all right? Yep. Uh, yeah, that's fine with me, sir. Okay. What line, Adam? What line? Yeah. Uh, 1,400. Okay. 1400. The OT wages. OT wages. Right. You know, it was 87,000 last year was the actual. It was budgeted for 174 this year, and it's 195 <coughs> requested. Right. Because of the um, the changes that come with the contractual obligations that are okay. have already been spelled out. All right. Um, the officers received a contract this year that increased their salary as well. Yeah. Um, so that's what the addition was. Uh, again, like I said, the last year's budget, we I, we did not have um, a vacancy after we filled in April. So there were no injuries, thankfully, and that were long term. And there was also uh, no vacancies created because we didn't we lacked staff. Okay, so, thank you. Yes, I sir. just think, you know, people, when they see it, an increase, oh, they like absolutely. to know exactly absolutely. why yeah. the increase has taken place. All right, we'll um, go down to fire prevention. Wait, what? Wait, Are we all done on fire suppression? Oh, Hold one, on. One sec. Jim jumped ahead a little bit. At the top of the uh, page, um, Which page, the gasoline and diesel. I'm a little nervous about that. I know that we don't pay tax <coughs> on the uh, fuel, but the way the rates are going up, Oh, good. I put all the gasoline and diesel numbers in based on our averages through the end of August. Prorated out, we watch them um, in regards to gallons purchased yeah. along with the price that we pay at the pump. So it's a thing that we've taken away from the departments over the last couple of years and brought it over towards the administration side, and we monitor it yeah. and adjust it along the way. So. Usually at the budget committee level, we have a firmer number of what we want to go with. And we have seen an increase, and Fred and I were talking about that, in yeah. the um, average cost, if you did like July through August, added mm -hmm. another 10 cents onto it. So we yeah. will most likely be bringing it to the budget committee with um, a higher yeah. price per gallon. Okay. Because I got a, I 
got gas about a week and a half ago, and I noticed it's already up a couple of cents a gallon. Oh, yeah. Just, oh, yeah. yeah. <coughs> And that, oh, yeah. that gasoline and diesel all the way through the budget, I'm just a little worried. So why don't we go to the fire prevention? Sir, Mark? Any questions on fire prevention? Wait a minute, what? I'm going by, I'm what? not going by, I'm going by the, the budget itself. Oh, okay, I'm going page to page. Um, okay. We, we well, can sort up the page if we need to do that, but if we go by the budget, at least the line item will have okay what we need to do so any questions on fire prevention no nope. <coughs> mr what is yeah i do <laughs> i knew you would sir <laughs> part-time wages part-time wages increased by 15 percent yeah that was a result of the collective bargaining agreement okay um the fire prevention secretary's salary was increased as a result of the job performed and the fact that it hadn't seen anything for the duration of the the job as far as i know in existence so they they um did a salary adjustment a wage adjustment that occurred, and now we're starting to see that as part of this contractual uh, obligation. Super. I got one question Go on this one. Um, under the training and recruitment, the last line, I see that you've gone up to the 49,000. That's in the training? That's training, not that's, that's fine. Not fire prevention. So. Oh, I'm sorry. So, nope, that's I'm fine. Sorry. No, that's okay. fine. That's fine. I jumped I just, ahead. I have a question just, on yep. that section. Any, any on uh, more on fire I prevention? A, I have a question. Well, I have a question on fire suppression because we kind of, okay, well, I guess, zip I'd through that. Um, fireworks detail wages. Yes, ma'am. Precinct paying for that? No, ma'am. And that was a discussion That's, that was brought to the board, and yes. the board decided that this would be part of the budget. Um, and I don't remember, I don't recall when that was. That I think that was two years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Chief Sawyer, who had discussed this with, with myself and yeah. the town manager, uh, for one year <coughs> we had been using the detail pay. Uh, out of that, I think it's a 24, yeah. is that right, Chris? 26 one. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and, and then we brought it back to the budget, the budget committee, I'm sorry, to the, um, to our budget. The board from the Hampton Beach Voter Precinct came in and dis discussed that too. So that was a decision to leave it in our budget, and that's why it's budgeted as it is. I increased it by $500 <laughs> because I feel that we're going to have uh, yeah. an increase over that okay. due to okay. contractual obligations. But since that is a precinct, uh, uh, happening, uh, I think they should be paying for that. But we have to have it one way or the other. We do. It's required to have a firefighter <laughs> on scene. We've yes. had some real big injuries there uh, as a result of having explosives. Oh, so. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now that we're done fire suppression prevention, <coughs> we're on to training. Okay. I have one question, Mr. Chairman. Under training and recruitment, the last line. Mm -hmm. So we've gone up to the forty-nine thousand four seventy-eight, which is thirty-nine percent increase. <laughs> But as of 831, we only spent 8,600, is that? That's not going to be a true number because uh, there's an <laughs> awful lot of, as you might imagine, um, carrying not only fireside but also uh, emergency medical services, we have a lot of requirements, certifications, and for that, there's a lot of con ed. These con ed classes are costing us you know, a significant amount of money. There's, a, mm. there's actually a uh, conference at the end of this month that several of our members are attending, and the cost will be coming out of there. There's a training item that's coming up uh, next week or the week after for the pump. Last week of October and the first week of November. So the last week of October and the first week of November, we've hired in a training consultant yeah. that's going to be bringing a pump simulator so that our firefighters will have Ooh. pump training. Uh, it's been it's the first time in a very long time that we've actually done that, but that wasn't cheap. That was about almost $7,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, so perfect. Thank that, you for the clarification. Absolutely. That, that number we also adjusted as uh, as we've discussed. We're trying to get a day where everybody goes and trains as a department, mm -hmm. as a group, so that the leadership and the, the people are on that group can function as a team. It's very important that they get to do that. Yeah. Okay. And training. Yeah, the same, on the training, the same thing. I mean, I'm 100% for training. <clears throat> Certainly. Yeah. I mean, that's a big right. jump. And as long as you can justify <coughs> that it's a necessary you know, uh, component mm -hmm. of right. your training. I think that's really crucial that you get out there and, and justify when there is such yeah. a big jump. In, in so, so one of the other things that we uh, we have not done yet, in conjunction with the police department, we're working on a practical, um, like a clinical application for active shooter and hostile event. So ashy type um, uh, scenarios. We really don't like to talk about it, obviously, because it's not something that's comfortable. But this event is going to take a lot of people, a lot of time, and we're anticipating doing that in in the new year. Mm. So, okay. we also so have to fire in I recruitments shot. in that. And do you have any uh, recruitment tests coming up? Or so we have. Uh, we don't have any vacancies. 
typically what we'll do is to create the list we'll we'll do that at, uh, around that time we haven't had a recruitment list for two years now I think right right we did all the uh, <laughs> yeah. right in February or late Jan January early February we have a lieutenant's promotional exam that list is going to expire that was two years mm -hmm. old uh, as far as firefighters we're we're coming up I think it's this summer we're going to be due for a firefighter list okay okay the the additional thing and to Mr. Waddell's point there's a large jump in the medical services that is our physicals that's a 36 percent increase um, we have done a lot of research and we have found a vendor that gave us the same physical essentially at half price uh, we're very happy about that but we also have to have the capability to do physicals because the New Hampshire Fire Academy now is requiring people to who are going to be doing a physical class if you're going to a class where you're gonna sit in a lecture you're able to just take that class but if you're going to be doing um, ropes or confined space or anything like that where you might have to expand yourself physically you need to provide with them with a note saying that you are capable to do that so we're planning for that so that if somebody wants to go they can get a physical if it, it's good for three years so we anticipate that this will be cyclical and we'll see that happen uh, additionally now with the cancer registry and the uh, the state moving forward with their um, situation with the, the cancer law we may be looking at expanding the role of, um, of examining people blood tests and that that sort of thing so that's why that jump any else in the training okay we'll go to communications wonderful Wage line item is the wage line item, and it's increased uh, contractual obligations. The yeah. OT wages, we've increased um, contractual obligations, and I also put in for quarterly meetings. The fire alarm operators sit in a small box. They're up front. You've seen that box. I know that I've given you tours there. Um, and very often, they're, they're not able to pass on a lot of information when it comes to what they'd like to see and discuss things. So it's been proposed by Captain Cutting, who is in charge of that division, that area, um, to have a quarterly meeting so that they can come together. Um, I support that 100%, so I put that into the budget as well, and that accounts for that along with the contractual obligation changes. Any questions on The grant today, it doesn't have anything to do with any of this stuff? It doesn't? No, the grant that we received today will replace mobile radios, which are the ones that are inside of the fire engines and ladder. Um, it's going to be base radios, which is the one that's in the communications tower, and we're going to be putting one down at the beach, which it doesn't have right now. And it also will be buying pagers so that we can be alerted at home. So this scenario, this is personnel, whereas that's equipment and necessary to be changed out, but it's all different components. Anything else in the communications? Repair services. The OT wages for repair services uh, allow us to drive the apparatus to get repaired. So that number has been raised, I believe it was two, or a year ago that we raised it to 1,500 from 1,000. Uh, when we're driving these apparatus, we're going to the places that can repair them, that, that are able to do so. Um, that's in Walpole, Mass, down by Gillette Stadium. That's also in Vassalboro, Maine. And it takes somebody six hours to go back and forth to Vassalboro. It takes mm -hmm. somebody at least four hours to go down to Gillette yeah. and back. So this overtime comes for that. Also, <clears throat> the um, the Marine program, when we are moving the boats to go get serviced, both pre-summer um, season and post-summer season, that account line item pays for that. For vehicle maintenance, we have asked for a level budget. However, I have in replacement equipment also altered that because the deputy has talked about the purchase of, because of the, the situation with EPA, the DEF fluid, which is the, um, it's the fluid additive that goes for diesel emissions. And this comes at a cost. We have two ambulances now, one engine, I believe, right, that all need DEF. Yes. So we purchased this through our vendor. Uh, we get a, a, an exceptional cost, price uh, reduction on it because of that, but we still need to purchase this. Any of the new vehicles that are diesel are coming out with that. So that portion of this budget is actually still in replacement equipment. Utility takes it now too. And the utility, our new utility, which was uh, arrived a week and a half ago, yep. also takes definitely. Thank you. Any questions? When you send them down to Foxborough, do they get tickets to the game? They don't, but I've, I've heard a rumor that Deputy Kennedy has taken a photograph with a ladder truck in front of Gillette Stadium. <laughs> 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 <coughs> haven't seen the photo yet. Maybe true. Stations and buildings. Stations and buildings. 
you know, we're exceptionally grateful not only to you but to the to the townspeople to have given us two essentially new buildings, right? We have one brand new building at the beach. Yeah. We have one brand new facility uh, adjacent to the older structure. Um, but they're also brand new is five years old now. So a lot of the components have failed in various ways. Um, we have seen failures in boilers at the Winnicott Road Station and also at the beach station. When researching that, some of these components that are failing, they're, they're big ticket items, but they're failing as a result of electronic equipment. And electronic equipment across the board is coming back five year minimum that you'll see failure rates. And that's coming from our plumbers, that's coming from our heating and ventilation <coughs> people. So the transition there, it's cost us a lot of money to maintain some of these um, structures and units already. We've had a couple of issues with an ele electrical surge potential and we've had three circuit boards down at the beach that have fried. Um, we're actually looking at the handicap entrance power button because that's not working right now. But we feel that it may be as a result of the generator when it goes to switch to um, from street power to generator power and then back is surging a little bit. That's not going to be a cheap fix if it's a transfer switch, which is kind of where the theory is right now. So as these buildings start to age, we're seeing some maintenance that really needs to happen. And that's why the increase here. Any questions on uh, I don't, but can we go back? Uh, sure. Yeah, I have a couple. Of on, on the, on the communications, you have replacement of equipment. And you have the marine engine? <clears throat> so that's not in communications. That's in replacement equipment under fire suppression. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's 42202-7450. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, and I was going to bring that up, actually. Um, Mr. Welch and I have a gentleman's agreement on Friday that we're able to move forward with that. Yes, sir. Sign the purchase order. Yeah, there we go. So Marine 2 will have a replacement motor. Uh, I've already talked to Lieutenant Weiser, who's in charge of the Marine program, and he's going to be contacting the vendor, and we should be seeing that this week. Hopefully, he's going to move forward anyway. So in doing so, that engine costs $7,132. And that includes labor. It doesn't include the cost of getting it there. That's on us. We're going to have that transported down, and I believe it'll probably be Lieutenant Weiser that transports it down. It's going to Gloucester, down to Brown's Yacht mm. Sales, and that's where we bought it in 1997. Mm. This motor is 21 years old, needed to be replaced. Yeah. So, And, and that, that's well used, right? I mean, just so people sure. know that that's <laughs> not something that just sits. No, it, it has a different job, too. Um, at Marine One, obviously, is the larger vessel, and that's the one that goes out into the open water, into the deep water. Um, it's not capable necessarily, especially uh, we all know the dredging situation. It's not designed to go into the harbor or up the river. Uh, this boat is a shallow pontoon boat. It's a it's a, um, a zodiac, so it's a rigid hull fiberglass with air foils, air pontoons on the side, um, and it's designed with a shallow draft so that it can go into the river and it can go into the shallower areas where the sand is. It also operates around the jetty and in, on the inner rocks. So anytime we have uh, people there, it's able to go perform. Okay. That boat's almost 20 years old. It's 21. Mm -hmm. I, th I, I was talking to Mr. Walsh, I said, hey, this thing's 19 years old. Yeah. And then I went and I looked at the registration, I go, hey, this thing's 21 years old. Yeah, you know? was, uh, yeah. It was getting up there. So. Yeah, I have a follow-up on this. Where You are risking the lives of firefighters, going out, doing the rescues on the water, because uh, the state beach is attracting a lot of people and a lot of them are a little careless in the water. Uh, is the state offering any compensation for Financial? the uh, for your boats and your engines and so forth? I think I know the answer, but I, I'd like to bring it out public. No, but I would like to say that the, the state operates the, the lifeguards and they're on duty from the end of May yeah. through beginning of September. Um, we work exceptionally well with them in concert with yes, them. Yes, you do. They do daily rescues that they never talk to us about. We never hear about them. Right. When it exceeds their capabilities, we get the call. If it's after hours, we get the call. Yeah. If it's off season, we yeah. get the call. Yeah. We also have been helping out other communities. Recently, and if you saw the news in Seabrook, there was a tragedy where two people perished as a result of being mm -hmm. taken out in a rip current. Mm -hmm. um, on that particular day, yep. that was a very mm -hmm. difficult situation. The water out there was, it was a very angry ocean and um, the lifeguards were called yep. and they actually responded to that. And it was, it put them in great danger because they were responding on a jet ski, two people, uh, you've seen the lifeguards. They're in a pair of shorts and a torpedo um, flotation yeah. device. They actually, it was one of the lifeguards that floated the, the second victim in on the torpedo. 
but they put themselves in harm's way and we work together yeah. but we're not compensated by the state to answer your question well I, I figured that was the case but I thought I'd ask because we are running uh, these boats and this equipment at a state park at a state beach rescuing the uh, people who come for the summer and I think the state could kick in a little money for your department I'm not sticking up for the state but we also work with fishermen absolutely we also party work boats with the Coast Guard no doubt yep. we also work with with mariners that might be offshore and not necessarily from the state beach so there's a lot that we're doing in other communities we've been right. responded before I was here but we responded to uh, to right um, and right right harbor yeah. and the um Merrimack. the Isle of Shoals Merrimack. Yeah. So, we you know, to the Merrimack yeah. too. absolutely the right. uh, recently right. we've seen a lot of mutual aid to surrounding communities because they've had a problem and to me that's mutual aid when it, Northampton had a problem we sent the boat and that's just the way it is yeah. you know they, they would come down if we needed help and they did this week we saw that with the fire this is mutual aid I just had a question actually to go back to the replacement okay. equipment for the 14,000 so you said that you're gonna no the 14,000 if you look at that if I'm not mistaken that's under communications right that 14,000 is a, a beginning step for program replacement for portable radios Okay. Now, tonight right. I talked to you about the right. fact that I want to go for a grant, but nothing says it will be successful. As we learned today from our FEMA yeah. um, yeah. guy, it's, he said that it's yeah, yeah. one in five. Um, okay. If we get them, they still only go by seated riding positions, so we won't get all of them that we need. Mm -hmm. So I started a program replacement for portable radios here in that line. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's pretty much it. I have anything further. Sir. Anybody have any other questions? Nope. Comments, concerns? Uh, wait a minute. I'm looking at my last, Good job. last Thank page. You, sir. Oh, by the way, on the last page, uh, building maintenance, you've got pest control. Does that include humans? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have a we have go ahead and try it. Again. <laughs> <laughs> we have concrete block buildings, but you'd be surprised at what we need to do down there at the beach and up yeah. here to, to keep the pests out, ants especially. Very nice budget, gentlemen. Thank you. Nice. So, where do we want to go from here? Do we want to? I, uh, my own, I would just soon hold off. That's fine. That's fine. I just want to see how the committee and yeah. stuff. The board wanted to do it, and we can uh, bring it yeah. back at a later time. Yeah. So. And we can change in that one page the higher amount of the grant that we just uh, accepted that, this morning because it went from that doesn't so I that actually discussed that with Ms. Pulliam about how we received that and in the past in 2008 there was an AFG grant that was received what will happen is I'm going to notify the vendor yep. that we want to make the purchase and in doing so we're going to say move forward with this and we have a quote so as an example with the pagers I'm going to move forward with that quote it's about $17,000 uh, when they get the equipment and then send it to us they're going to then invoice us Upon receipt of that invoice, I'm going to contact the federal government and say disperse the funds in this amount. And then when they disperse the funds, it's going to go to the general fund and then be re removed and moved back, I believe, right, Christy, to the grants line item at that point. So what will happen was the, <coughs> the general fund come back to the fire department after we rec uh, make a requisition, but it doesn't just come to us now that we've received it. They don't give us the money and let us grow the interest. They give it to us when we need to pay for something. Okay. So... Any other questions for the chief of deputy? No, very, very nice job. Seeing none. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. You. Have a great night.